Welcome. This is Money Heart, where we explore the emotional side of money. I'm Camille Diaz, and today we're discussing planned maintenance. My guest is Deborah Jenkins. Deborah and Julius Warren own Doc J's Heating and Air Conditioning in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They focus on pre-planning, HVAC replacements, and planned maintenance. Deborah, welcome to Money Heart. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Sometimes on this show, um, we discuss the concept of how someone gets to a point in life where they have made themselves financially secure, and that way they can start using their money and time and resources to help other people. So that's, that's kind of one of the concepts that I know we've covered in other episodes. You are one of the people who actually managed to do that. Can you <laughs> tell us a little bit about your story before you got to where you are now? Uh, yeah, the, the, the story that we would talk about is that um, I am a, I'm a retired physician and I, at the age of about uh, 30, uh, 45, I was able to um, make a major change in, in, in my career path. It was still in medicine, but I was able to work with Doctors Without Borders, uh, a international uh, medical humanitarian organization. And um, I was able to do that because of very purposeful, purposeful planning, uh, living below my means um, with the idea of wanting to be able to do it mid-career um, when I felt that I was uh, most fit to be able to do it, most enthusiastic and um, not wanting to uh, wait until retirement because you never know what's going to happen then. Um, so true. I, was able, I was able to do that because of, of the planning and uh, living below my means. Mm -hmm. And so that opened up opportunities um, that um, allowed me to be able to um, uh, do humanitarian medical work in many different countries. Uh, several countries in Africa, in Haiti, in the Middle East, and then in the Far East. Wow. It also gave me a chance to use my French because I speak, oui, je parle français. I speak conversational French. Nice. And so what, what an incredible experience to be able to do that. Um, so but that was, it wouldn't have been possible if I didn't have that financial base. Um, right. So yeah, that's the, that's, that's the, that's the part. That's beautiful. I love that you were able to do that and travel the world and actually help mm -hmm. people, you know, in other places and, and still come back and, and be financially sound. At, and I think uh -huh. at 45, that's not common. Let's just say it's not common. It's not that nobody. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Uh -uh. No, it, it, it wasn't. Uh -huh. And how many years did you get to spend doing that? I got to do that for 12 years. 12 years. Uh -huh. I did that for 12 years. Uh -huh. So when we were chatting about this episode, you said something that stuck with me, which was, we always have the best of intentions and then life intervenes. How does that kind of relate to our topic today of planned maintenance? Because I noticed we're talking about planned maintenance, not preventative maintenance. And most people think of it as, well, if I do the maintenance, then nothing bad will happen. But that's all we're talking about because we know that that's not really the way it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, with the last part, the thing is, is that um, uh, the idea of preventative maintenance sells a whole lot better than planned maintenance. <laughs> True. That's <laughs> yeah, marketing. You can, okay. You can just stop things from happening, period. And so you can't uh, stop things from happening, period. You can make them li less likely that they're going to happen. You can extend the, the lifespan of things in your home. Um, such as your appliances in particular. Um, and so when we were talking about how life intervenes, um, I, I don't know, you, you're gonna have to help me out a little bit in terms of how much you like, but usually what happens is this, is that um, when we're even thinking about moving into a home, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
uh, we're, we're in an apartment or something and then, you know, people are pressuring you and they go, oh, it's time for you to move into a home. You could spend the same amount of money in your house. And yes. so, uh, we add up the mortgage payment. We add up the taxes, mm -hmm. the insurance payments and utilities. And then we go, OK, I'm ready because right. they are they come out to be equal. And you say, I can do this. Yes. So, Yes, you can you do. Actually get into the home, but usually what, what is underestimated is the cost involved with owning the home, the, uh, the, the, just the ongoing maintenance. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is a, it, it's a significant part. And um, sometimes if, if, if you really think about it, you go, oh my gosh, can I really afford a house? Well, you, right. you can if you buy, if you buy property that's suitable for your income. Mm-hmm. A tremendous amount of, of um, you can be more secure in your home and you can right. still buy. You just maybe won't buy something quite as big if you need to spend more money uh, or, you know, on planning. Um, and there's a, there's kind of a general rule of thumb is that um, they, there's one based on percentages. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is, uh, one to four percent of the assessed value of your home. Uh, so your round figure is like two and a half to 3% to be safe. Mm -hmm. That's in the middle. Um, but mostly we don't really um, like percentages very much. <laughs> and so the <laughs> more concrete numbers are for you to actually take what your property taxes are mm -hmm. and then what you are paying in terms of insurance for your home. And then if you add those two together, you often end up coming up uh, with a number that's about 3% or thereabout of the assessed value of your home um, per year. Um, so like in my case, mine is approximately $4,000. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you know you need to save $4,000 a year approximately to spend on maintenance. Some, something will need need it. Well, and, or yes, and you're going to have some some years that you're not going to hardly spend anything. Right. And so what will happen is people will say, "Well, shoot, hey, that's great vacation." Really, I you know this year I only spent a thousand dollars, and so right. you go, "I've got three thousand dollars to go on vacation," uh -huh. and it's uh, it's like uh, you know uh, Saint Croix, here I come, <laughs> Mexico, I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> Canada, <laughs> and that's very and and it, it's attractive to do that. But the important thing about homes is that you you, you if you spend a thousand a thousand one year, you got to take that three thousand and roll it over into the next year because right. you got the biggies, right? Um, that we tend to not think about. We think about when we're thinking about even like on our appliances. Well, we, we think about the ones that are right in front of us. <laughs> sure. So, the refrigerator, the dishwasher, the, yep. uh, the washer dryer. Mm -hmm. They age right in front of us. Um, and not only do they age in terms of mechanics, they age in terms of colors. <laughs> <or stuff. laughs> A lot of style. Yeah, um, they do. And so, you know, uh, and those costs are, are ones that we get really familiar with and they're always in the front of our minds. But our biggest, and I like to call it appliances, is, is, our, is your heating and air conditioning system. Um, that is one huge appliance. That is a huge appliance. Yeah. Yes. And yes. the cost of replacing that uh, is going to be almost twice what all those other things added right. up. It's going, major. We did ours uh -huh. a few years ago. It yeah, was in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of, of having to, to replace that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a given because we know what the lifespans are 15 to 20 years. Sometimes you right. can go longer. My sister has one that I think she is trying to set a history record. Oh, gosh. <laughs> From the 1980s. Wow. Okay, well, she's balancing but... out the average for ours because we only made it about 10 years. Yeah. And which is really yeah. short. It should have lasted longer than that, but major components failed after 10 years. So, and that, and, and that can happen. It happens. It happens. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, which, which we, 
really don't pay attention to, but you know, keeps us keeps us safe, keeps us warm. My gosh, uh, keeps that hail that's always pounding in Oklahoma off of us is our roof. Right. And um, there's you know there's formulas for that, but in general, um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna you're looking at least fifteen thousand for a roof replacement for an mm -hmm. average average home, and it's not not a big one. Um, and then actually roof costs are even more than say uh, for my parents' generations because there's so many more um, homes that have high ceilings. Yep. And so the, uh, that, that is more roof. It <laughs> is. It's, like, and it's a we more difficult love. We angle. love the vaulted ceilings. They're just fabulous. Mm -hmm. they, but they're an additional expense because more materials are being used. Right. That is so true. when I was calculating um, my own house, I had to add an additional $2,500 in my projections um, because of the vaulted ceiling that's in the in the main living area and also in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just it's it is the way it is. And yeah. So, uh -huh. And sometimes, you know, our, our insurance, we could make a claim if it's all hail damage or something like that. But even then, you'll still have a deductible or there'll be things that the insurance doesn't cover that you're still going to have to go out of pocket for. So makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to yeah. plan, mm -hmm. uh -huh. plan for those. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I loved your concept of the wealthy only pay for things once. Can you elaborate on how that works? Because I... I try to explain this concept to people all the time, but I had never explained it that way before. And it was so clear that I just loved it. Well, I, I, um, I mean, you, you said it and, and, and um, I think the thing is, is that a lot of times when we think of wealthy, we think of um, being able to buy, buy a lot of things mm -hmm. and, uh, and expensive things. And that's what, um, is the advantage of being wealthy, sure. sure. But the other thing that people who are wealthy get, get the opportunity to do is that say, for example, when they buy their refrigerator or they buy their washer dryer, um, if they've saved their money appropriately and they have the funds, then they just buy it. Right. If the sticker price uh, for the washer dryer is $1,000 combined, they pay $1,000 plus tax. Yep. Okay. And maybe a delivery fee. And you're right. So they pay that and that's it. Mm -hmm. But when we have to do things where we don't have that readily available money and we have to charge it mm -hmm. or out some kind of a loan to make that possible, then we take that $1,000 price that and we have translated it into $1,200 or $1,300. Yes. And um, so here you are um, where you paid um, $300 more than the wealthy guy that <laughs> if anybody yeah. could have paid the extra 300, it could have been the, the person with that, that had the money already set aside. Right. And so, it, it's, it, it's that, you know, being able to plan ahead so that you can get on that cash basis mm -hmm. possible is what allows you to only pay for things once. Yeah. And if you are able to start only paying once, you, it's amazing how, how, how much money starts to be available to, um, uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It gives you a lot of freedom. It does. Yeah, that concept. And it gives you the freedom uh, being able to, to purchase or um, replace things when it's good timing for you. Oh. Not when your dishwasher says, it's a good time for me <laughs> right now. Yeah. Okay? It's yeah. going to say, you know, or when your washing machine decides, mm -mm, I am not going to agitate one more time. Mm -mm. <laughs> right. Mm -mm. Right. Uh -uh. I stop. Yep. yep. <laughs> I've been through that with a nice load of very wet clothes that yeah, had yeah. to dry for a, quite a, a few days. 
right. <laughs> because it just stopped right in the middle and our and everything just died all at once yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. that was that was mm -hmm. kind of miserable to not have it could be a capability to do laundry and then you got to get it and then you have to wait for them to bring it and then mm -hmm. our uh, ours was double hard because the new things that we picked out didn't fit in the old configuration in our laundry room mm -hmm. so i actually had to have a plumber come out and rerun the gas line so that we could turn everything to face the other way so we could get them through the door and open the door you know open the doors close the doors to do laundry mm -hmm. what a mess mm -hmm. what a, and not at all on my schedule i was on the washing machine <laughs> schedule <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah very very mm -hmm. accurate and I, I love your point about um basically compound interest you know, if you're putting mm -hmm. it on the credit card, you're paying for that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We end up paying for a daily basis. And then the other thing I think that's been a trend is that um, the credit cards are so readily available that people, we, you know, we, we tend to think of them first before if we do have to finance things, what our other op options are. Mm -hmm. Other options um, could be quite a bit cheaper in the long run. Right. And, um, and, and, and they're not so cumbersome. I, I mean, say, for example, when it comes to home improvements, there, there are short term loans that are that are available through our local bankers mm -hmm. that don't involve taking a second or anything on your mortgage that are very, very reasonable and right. get not to think of, uh, uh, about that. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, because I think I, 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 you actually had said something in an early episode when you were talking about the, or, or at another time, you were talking about the average um, interest on credit cards. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't remember that figure, but you had mentioned a figure of, was it around 13%? I, I want to say that that's what it was. Yes, mm -hmm, I'm, mm -hmm, I'm trying to, mm -hmm. I remember mentioning it. I think it was at a Wine, Women and Wealth event and I can't mm -hmm. quite remember that statistic right now. But I think, um, it, I think, and that sounds about right. right. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And it kind of seems mm -hmm. to be going up because I, I've i always had kind of a low rate and, and good credit. And it seems like every time I turn around, they're just eking that up slightly, a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, mm -hmm. and then they just mm -hmm. eke it up a little bit more. And I'm like, I didn't even buy anything, but they eke it up a little more. <laughs> So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, yes, absolutely. Do you have any suggestions on how we can start to shift our mindset um, to having this kind of wealthy mindset, wealthy behavior, paying for things once, saving up before we get something? Um, what, what tips or tricks do you use? How did you develop that for yourself? Because it seems really clear that you're, you do it well. Um, to, to start off from the very beginning like that, mm -hmm. uh, I think that um, sometimes it just means putting up with delayed gratification. Uh, and, and, and what's amazing is, you know, we're inundated all the time with, um, you know, all these things we can buy. And when they're in front of us all the time, it's not like they're passive. I mean, they, they are so, uh, advertising is around us so much that they're literally saying, buy me, buy me, buy me, buy me, <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, but, but if you just say, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I choose to do something else. And if you wait, uh, usually that just passes, whatever. Yeah it just passes. Or if you need to, you can do something small. So you feel like, oh, this is kind of fun. I'm not just always, um, uh, you know, sacrificing or not doing it. Right. But start off from the, from the very beginning, no matter, no matter what, you know, um, living, living within your means, which can be tough, but, it, but, but it's workable. Mm -hmm. um, I finished my residency program. I think I was about the only resident that had money saved. And wow. uh, almost unheard of <laughs> really really yeah yeah I mean yeah it's like because there's always a banker that wanted you to get in debt because of what they thought was going to be the payoff oh I think the important thing is to start young 
and uh, from the as, as from the beginning. And then say, for example, if when you do get, make it a raise or a bonus at work, um, have part of that go committed uh, mm -hmm. for, um, you know, future purchases. Um, don't, don't, don't um, um, take, um, do that before you get used to it. <laughs> yes. You yeah. know, if you get if you start if you get a bonus and it's great and it's ten thousand dollars, you know, uh, before you get used to what it's like to live on ten ten more thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. um, take take a good part of it and um, have that toward um, you know future you know things where you can buy them, and then take part of it, you know, yeah. and then and then you'll you'll be happy with what what you have. Right. So already have it allocated when that money's coming in. So and I think that's a great right. point, regardless of whether it's a bonus or your regular paycheck to mm -hmm. plan your allocations before the money gets in. This much is going to savings. This much is going to fund stuff. This much is paying off bills. This much is, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. And then once the money comes in, you just put it into that formula mm -hmm. and you already know where it's going rather than the money comes in, you're all excited. And now the temptation is to go buy something new and fun. And then, mm -hmm. oh, right, I was supposed to get that other thing done. <laughs> well, and you know, a, a, a friend of mine said one time too, which is funny is that when you have children, you should just keep score with how many times they're going to ask you according to their age. <laughs> when they're in elementary school, if it's something they really are after, they're going to ask you at least 15 times. So you might as well just have a good time and say, say no. And you go, okay, that's one. <laughs> no, that's two. <laughs> no, that's three. Uh -huh. <laughs> Up to 15 and then you're probably going to be free. <laughs> and they'll stop. Yeah. Uh, you know, your teenagers probably only going to do it five times. Mm -hmm. They're going to be sneakier. <laughs> oh yes. They're very advanced. <laughs> <laughs> for sure Still keep score <laughs> yes yes they're probably counting how many times they've asked you <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they're quite good at that. yeah get her while she's tired <laughs> that's right that's right oh look she's really happy right now and in a good mood it's the perfect time to ask <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep they're very good at that very good at yeah. that okay mm -hmm. well this has been wonderful thank you so much for spending time with me today it was fun Mm -hmm. Awesome. Deborah Jenkins and her husband, Julius Warren, own Doc J's Heating and Air. They specialize in remodeling, replacing equipment, and planned maintenance. The best way to get in touch with them is their phone number, 918-921-4240. And they also have a website, docjsheatandair.com, all spelled out. Thank you as well to our listeners and viewers. I'm your host, Camille Diaz. This show is sponsored by Serenity Financial, a Five Rings financial agency, specializing in financial education, living benefits, and guaranteed lifetime income. Be sure to follow Money Heart on social media at Money Heart Show and on our website, moneyheartshow.com. The money mantra that Deborah came up with for us today is, the cheapest thing in the short term might not be the best investment in the long term. Thank you so much, Deborah. Bye. <laughs>